In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is one. Today we celebrate the visit of the wise men to Christ. It took them some time to get there. We know that because in the scripture it says they went into the house. They didn't go into the cave. They saw the Lord in a house. And it could have been up to two years later. Certainly by the reaction of Herod later on, that seems to be reasonable. So they arrived late on the scene, but I guess they set off at the same time as the shepherds did. It just took them that long to get there. And that gives us some idea of the incredible journey that they made. It was not an easy thing to do, and when they arrived, they didn't find really what they expected to find. But I'm going to concentrate not so much on their journey, though that is important, but on what they brought with them and what they gave to Christ. We have these three men, Magi, they're probably Zoroastrians. They understand something about the stars in the sky. And they're led by the stars to something new. They abandon that, they leave that behind, and they find Christ. Not something up in the sky, but somebody they could pick up and they could hold in their hands and cuddle and place back down and worship. And that alone is important. And they then take out their gifts. The first one takes out gold, second one frankincense, and the third one takes out myrrh. These are really important gifts to the givers. They describe what is most important for them. It's like us saying, what shall I give to God? I will give to God the most important thing to me. And that's what they did too. The first one gave gold. Now gold for him, what does it represent? His success, his wealth, his status. It represents his stability, his self-worth. The fact that he's not going to be uh, rusted by anything else. Gold will be permanent and therefore shows his own permanence, his own stability. And this is what it is that he lays at the feet of Christ. This is me, he says, and it's for you, Lord. In doing so, he recognizes the kingship of Christ. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ is indeed a king. He is a king like none other we will ever know. And his kingship is important for that man too. Because in recognizing the Lord's kingship, he becomes a member of that kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, with a king who is eternal, a king who is eternally loyal, a king who will never abandon his subject, a king who loves his subject, a king who is prepared to die for his subject and for his citizens. Now along comes the second wise man. He has with him frankincense. Frankincense is the stuff that we burn in our services as a sign of our worship and prayer. And frankincense of this man is to do with his spirituality, his life of prayer, his, ab his ability to look deeply into truth and find God there. His ability to understand the underlying spiritual nature of all that is. And he places this down in front of Christ as well. What does he receive in return? He has acknowledged that Christ is God. And by doing so, the Lord himself answers his prayers. He receives him into his spiritual realm. He receives him into the church. He receives him as a son of God. He receives him as a man of prayer. He receives him into heaven itself. The third one comes along with myrrh. Myrrh is a dark substance. We burn it sometimes uh, during Lent and other times like that. It's, it's acrid. It also is something you put on the skin or something or, or you can 
in order to preserve it. Um, it was used as a preservative and as a healing ointment as well. So it's about the dark and sad and sinful and um, rotting, and about death, about loss, about disappearance. And this man brings the Lord his own death, his own short life and his illness and his inadequacy and the Lord looks at that and he receives the myrrh also myrrh is offered for his own death and the Lord takes that and he transforms that one as well in return he gives that man life forgiveness wholeness healing, eternal life, his love, all his inadequacies made full. So the three wise men, they come and they offer to Christ the thing that is at the centre of each one of them. Three very different gifts. The first tell us that he's a king. The second that he is God. The third one about his messiahship and the sort of sacrifice that he is going to make for us and for everyone at all times in every place. So what do we need to do as well? We come on this Christmas day, on this feast of the nativity of our Lord and God and Saviour in time, and we take what is absolutely ourselves. I take me and you take you and we present ourselves as a gift to our Lord and whatever we have given to him he will take it and offer it back to us <clears throat> transfigured transformed made perfect made part of the kingdom of heaven forgiven sacrificed for heard, answered, made beautiful. And that is what this feast is all about. God bless you for a happy Christmas season. Amen. <laughs>